It's September 13th, 2013, and I'm about to do something that I have never intentionally done before, and that is machine the jaws in my vise. I've got a pick set of uh, Monster Soft Jaws from MonsterJaws.com, and I decided this was going to be the solution for fixturing these small parts that I need to make. These are uh, some early prototypes, one of which is on the ground now. Uh, and I decided that a soft jaw was the way to go. So I need to machine the soft jaws in order to make this happen. So that's what I'm about to do. There are a couple things worth mentioning. Uh, first of all, the part number on these is 5MJV521A. Uh, they work probably for the Tormach vise. Uh, I, I don't know if it works for the CNC vise that Tormach has, but the standard machinist vise, they do work. Uh, of course, there's some play in them. The bolts are not completely tight, but they're mostly tight. You get a line them up, line them up side to side when you attach them. Same goes for both. Now, because I am holding the parts on opposite sides, there needs to be some alignment between the two, and I figured the easiest way to do that, uh, at least for the purposes of holding the parts once these are machined, is to uh, machine them in there in a center position somewhere halfway between the uh, the sliding position and then when I'm tightening the, the uh, vise down the first time what I'll actually do is hold the uh, hold the part in place to align that from the fixed jaw side to the moving jaw side and then once the two are aligned then I would tighten up the bolts that are on this side of course I can't do that because the gap in there would be small be half an inch or so but the idea there is that I will be able to uh, align the two so that they're straight across from one another. Now, machining, uh, picking the zero point for machining was fairly interesting. I used my standard routine, which is uh, X0 is on this face, Y0 is on this, on this face, so the Z0 position is this corner. Sorry, the XY0 position is on this corner. Well, in order to machi machine this one, I pick this as the a separate program entirely. Uh, I pick this as the X0, Y0 location. I just set all the machining operations to be over in this area. Now, what that means is I had to have some space in, here, in between the two sides when I machine. And it also means that the, uh, the zero location matters a lot. Now, what I'll do in this case is I'm actually going to set the Z0 off of this part and assume it's close enough for this one. Uh, they're both they're both resting on the uh, on the, the slide of the on the vise here. But in order to be sure that I have a good uh, a good alignment, although seeing the movement there and there, I'm not sure that's completely critical. So I'll set x zero here, y zero there. Call that my x y zero point. And then when I move to this part to machine it, I'm just going to set my y zero point here and leave the x zero point the same. Uh, the same as it was over on this one. That way, when the two are bolted uh, bolted down, in this position, the alignment is uh, correct from one to the other. So I don't re-zero off this. That way, I don't get any variation in the center line of the bolt to the edge of the um, uh, edge of the vice jaw, anything like that. So that's the plan. I got the G code all ready to go. Getting ready to test run it, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, the code for the first jaw, the fixed jaw, is now complete. You see I have the uh, jaws installed tightened down with the um, standard jaws clamped in between to give some space in between the two. Space doesn't really matter too much exactly what it is. What matters more than anything is the uh, fact that they're far enough apart that there won't be any tool crashes. Speed is 40 inches a minute. The width of cut is 60,000. Depth of cut is 100,000. I'm leaving 5,000 on this path. Actually, 6,000 on this path to come back and finish later in the second half of this operation. You have to forgive the semi-random order of the uh, operation, but it shows not to take the time to optimize all the steps. This is chart 
the second depth now. Sorry, it's working on the uh, fourth pocket. It's just in the wrong place. All right, now it's just start on the second depth. with a cut, feed rate of 20 inches a minute. Sensing operations on the bottom level are exactly the same on this cut. Alright, the first operation is complete. The, uh, uh, the pockets all look good. I don't have any chamfering operations planned for this. Uh, I don't feel like there's any reason for it. it reduces my clamping area and uh, it'll be exceptionally difficult to get down in there. So I don't want to worry about that too much. I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, and I'm on to the second part of this operation, which is engraving it so I know which part it is, which uh, fixture this is in the future. Depth of cut by an inch per minute feed rate. The tool that I'm using is not an engraver, it's a tampering tool that I haven't had laying around. I haven't bothered to pick up an engraver yet because I'm not engraving anything other than uh, stuff for my own personal purposes. Alright, now I'm on to machining the second jaw, the moving jaw here. I've reset the X0, Y0 location to this corner. All I did was change the Y to do that, I didn't change the uh, X coordinate or the Z coordinate at all. I'm going to keep that the same. All right, the second set of operations. Uh, the first set of operations on the second jaw is underway right now. So these uh, operations are in random order as well. Again, nothing I'm not terribly worried about. The prototype parts are fit into the jaws. They look, uh, the fit's pretty good. The way that I made sure I had enough room for it, or at least uh, guessed at it, maybe is a better way of saying it, is I put uh, one thou of clearance all the way around to be sure it was in there. Now, as a result of that, it doesn't fit in perfectly, but they're pretty close.